I'm going to talk a bit about uh, the way browsers implement and optimize uh, the document object and the layouting and drawing thereof. Uh, as Malte mentioned, my name is Marijn Havenbeke. I work for Mozilla, but not on any of this stuff. Uh, so actually, I expect there will be several people in the room who know more about this than I do. They're free to correct me at any time. You might know me from one of these things, uh, the book and the software Code Mirror, which is uh, an editor uh, that runs, a code editor that runs inside the browser. I'd like to start by making the claim that um, the DOM is actually a great platform that we can be very glad to have that. Uh, probably half of you have already moved on to Node.js and are doing only server-side work or something. Um, but uh, the general um, grumbling that's often happening about the browser as a platform is partially justified, but we have a very, very nice and powerful platform in the browser. Um, you declaratively de define and create your documents. Then you have a full view of these documents that you can, from your scripts, manipulate and inspect. Uh, and all that is, is by now heavily optimized so that it's actually amazing how fast uh, things are being handled by the browser. So say you have a document, a big complex document like almost every single website that we're looking at nowadays. Um, the first thing of course is the browser parses the HTML that comes in, applies the styles, I'll come back to applying styles later. But let's think about how um, the drawing happens. It's a three-stage process. Oh, I guess this is smaller than I intended, right? Um, first, the browser builds up uh, what's usually called a render tree or a, a layout tree. The, um, instead of the document hierarchy, um, nodes are organized by spatial relations. So. Um, it resembles the DOM very much, but if you have, for example, an absolutely positioned element, it is moved up to the actual parent that uh, determines its position, which is the first parent that's absolutely or relatively positioned. Uh, if you have uh, fixed position stuff, it's moved all the way to the top of the document because um, the position of these elements is not, does not depend on the position of other elements. Display none stuff is removed from this tree altogether in most browsers. Um, so you get a tree that corresponds very closely to the actual rectangles that are appearing on the screen and their uh, dependencies uh, in positioning and sizing. The next thing is the layouting. Um, this tree, this layout tree is walked in a way that assigns every single visible node a size and a position, so a rectangle somewhere in the coordinate space of the document. If you have inline elements, they might end up with multiple rectangles. If they get line broken, um, each line gets its own rectangle. Um, this layouting uh, is mostly a top-down process. Um, a node gets a width that it's allowed to take it lays out its descendants, uh, so inline stuff gets line broken, gets put next to each other until you reach the end of the line and it moves on to the next line. Block elements get just put under each other. And the output of this process for each node is a height, which is then used to lay out its uh, siblings and uh, anything further down the tree. Um, so I said mostly top-down, some things complicate this. Uh, tables mostly need multiple passes because uh, table cells are adjusted to, uh, well, the, the size of a table, the width of a table cell depends on its siblings, so they'll have to be laid out once to find their maximum height, the maximum width, the width that they want, then the actual width is determined. Especially if you have deeply nested tables that can result in a lot of going up and down the, the, the layout tree in order to fix uh, an actual layout for each table cell, which is one of the reasons people hate tables, uh, I guess. Final step is 
drawing this whole tree, which is basically organizing it in Z index order, uh, running over it and blitting everything to the screen. I'll come back to uh, optimizations of that process later. Um, layouting tree once is actually not that hard. The thing is that we have come to expect to be able to change this tree constantly and have it consistently relayouted in a performant, fast way. It already starts during building up the document. When something is loading slow, it will often be rendered before it's fully parsed. Browsers parse documents incrementally, building up this tree as they are running through the HTML text. Um, for quick loading pages, this happens once, and then you get a layout and a draw. For slow loading pages, only half the page will be loaded, and then um, you already want to draw something to the screen, so you get this partial DOM tree is laid out, and then later on the parsing process continues adding notes. At some point, relayouts it, draws it again, maybe continues until it has parsed the whole document. There's also things like, uh, for example, the hover pseudo class. Uh, when you're moving your mouse through the document at any point, uh, styling can change, which can, if you write specific uh, CSS rules, can change the actual size of elements, can cause relayouts of arbitrary parts of the document. And of course, scripts tend to change the DOM uh, and expect that it will be uh, immediately redisplayed in the correct way. So if we have a small demonstration document, I can demonstrate uh, layout dependencies between nodes. If I were to add a little inline node somewhere in this document, um, well, one thing is clear, this paragraph that I'm changing has to be line broken again. It might drop down another line and thereby change its height, uh, causing the next paragraph to be shifted down. Uh, but, for example, the title and the sidebar and the paragraph above it are never affected by a reflow of this paragraph. So the browsers optimize this and don't actually even touch these, uh, these nodes uh, during this reflow. Also, this paragraph down here, it might move down, but it never has to be re-line uh, re broken. Its width, its width doesn't change, so that's a very fast process. It's just moved down a bit if uh, it doesn't actually happen here, but if this would uh, cause this paragraph to get a different height. If there were more things below, say a footer, uh, then those would also depend on, um, on the size of of this paragraph, even though they are not siblings of ch or children of this paragraph. So um, it's a kind of in-order dependency. Everything that comes after a given node in an in-order walk of the layout tree might be uh, affected by a, a size change of this specific node. Um, so what that means is that uh, manipulating things that are positioned absolutely, which is out of the tree, is typically crazy fast because there are no dependencies on other parts and there are no uh, other parts that depends on absolutely positioned nodes. Uh, similarly, changing things like uh, color or uh, CSS transform or visibility hidden doesn't cause any relay out, it causes a redraw of this node, but the rest of the document doesn't change position or size depending on this node, so that's efficient. On the other hand, changing, uh, adding or removing things, especially in big uh, documents, in the flow of the document, can be arbitrarily expensive. Um, one thing uh, that's a very important part of how browsers optimize this is that they uh, reflow a document lazily. They try, uh, they don't immediately, when a script touches something, they don't immediately recompute the layout, but they mark all the nodes that might potentially be affected by the change as dirty. And then when the script finishes, in the optimal cases, only when the script finishes do they relay out every single dirty node. Uh, 
Usually if a script makes a bunch of changes, there's a huge amount of overlap in uh, the layout work that has to be repeated. So if you only do it once, you're saving yourself 99% uh, of the work. One interesting case here is that scripts can read uh, layout information, for example, through properties like offset top or computed style dot width. Uh, if you're doing that in your script, you're forcing a layout if the note that you're reading is dirty. Um, so the worst case is uh, a loop that's changing the DOM and then reading uh, layout information from the DOM again. It will be forcing a layout on every iteration and you can make huge, huge uh, time savings by uh, somehow rewriting your code to not do this, to minimize layout round trips. Uh, for example, in CodeMirror at some point, uh, this editor, uh, there was code that was building uh, a line number bar on the side by, it wanted to ensure that uh, there were enough line numbers to cover the actual height of the content. So it was adding a note, checking the height of the line number bar, if it was high enough, it stopped. If not, it added the next note. This could take for a few thousand lines, seconds of freezing the browser completely. Uh, by rewriting it to uh, be a little more clever, like checking, uh, computing the amount of notes it needed in advance and just adding them without reading it, it took three milliseconds, I think. So you can really get order of magnitude increases by uh, by being careful about it, even if it means building up big data structures to cache some data that you don't want to read during your uh, DOM manipulation. Um, a very important aspect of drawing is uh, of drawing a DOM is making as much use of the hardware of the video hardware as possible, because in almost every current machine, drawing things through video hardware is much much faster than drawing them in software. Uh, this kind of starts with simple things like if you're drawing something with a blue background, you're using the video hardware to blit the blue rectangle instead of blitting all the bits yourself. Um, but it gets uh, much more advanced. For example, what Mozilla is currently moving towards, I think other browsers are doing similar things, but I don't know the details, is uh, a system that detects, uh, that divides the rendering tree into layers, where layers are things that have a fixed relative position to each other uh, in regard to scrolling and to um, animation. So that, um, for example, in a very simple document, everything has a fixed position compared to each other. If there are no fixed backgrounds or fixed elements, uh, no internal scrolling uh, diffs, then the whole document is basically one picture that doesn't move except for script changes or style changes. Um, so you can render this to an off-screen buffer and then just let the video hardware blit as you're scrolling, blit this buffer at different, uh, different positions. And this is probably the fastest way to do scrolling because there are no round trips to actual DOM uh, elements happening. You don't need to walk your tree and draw the elements individually. You just build up this buffer once and then blit it. Um, this even works for more complicated things. Say you have a fixed background uh, and you're scrolling transparent nodes over that. Uh, if you create a layer, I'm not sure if Mozilla does this at the moment, uh, if Firefox does this at the moment, but uh, it's something that they're hoping to do. You can create a layer that's partially transparent uh, with an alpha channel and just blit that over your background during scrolling which is still uh, much, much more, much, much faster than um, building up your uh, tree node by node uh, as you're doing your, uh, your scroll. Another thing is, of course, 3D transforms. CSS 3D transforms are pretty much defined as uh, video card operations. So um, you draw your buffer and then once, and then you let the video card handle the transformations, uh, which is why uh, they are often faster than 2D transforms, uh, even though they do almost the same thing. One thing I glossed over before is uh, that before you can do any layout or drawing, is that you need to resolve all the styles for every node. 
is actually non-trivial because uh, there are usually a lot of styles and a lot of notes and matching a style, a style rule against an actual DOM note is not a trivial process. It might require walking uh, up the DOM tree to uh, ancestors. It might even require backtracking if you have long chains of uh, ancestor rules. Uh, the naive uh, algorithm would be uh, have complexity to the number of nodes times the number of rules. So if we look at some uh, node and rule counts of some popular sites, you're seeing that if you do uh, an algorithm like that, um, for example, Twitter would require 10 million rule matches, um, which is doable, I guess. 10 million isn't that much, but uh, which would definitely be a waste of resources. So um, there's actually a pretty simple trick to, to greatly reduce the amount of rule matches that have to be done. I think uh, most browsers do it. I know WebKit and Firefox do it uh, like that. I expect most do something similar. It involves buckets. Say um, you have you index all your rules uh, after you're loading your your style sheets by um, the rightmost selector uh, of the rule. Uh, each rule ends up in one and only one of four buckets. If the rightmost selector has a has an ID, then um, it ends up in the first bucket indexed by ID. If it has a class, it's indexed by class into the second bucket. If it doesn't have class or ID, it's indexed by tag name in the third bucket. If it has neither of these three, then it ends up in the last bucket, which is actually a list, uh, not a hash table. Now, if you need to find all applicable rules for a specific node, you first uh, you check whether it has an ID. If it does, you look in the ID bucket. For each of its classes, you look in the class bucket. Uh, you then always look in the node name bucket for well, fetching all the, the rules that apply to this node name. And you always have to walk over all the nodes in the last bucket because they can't be meaningfully indexed. Um, this cuts down the amount of rules that you have to look at by several orders of magnitude. Uh, so then you have to, once you've found all applicable rules, you have to sort them by, by relevance, uh, by specific, specificity. CSS defines a, a scoring scheme for rules um, where uh, more, more specific rules take uh, precedence over other ones. So there's always some sorting involved as multiple rules match. Uh, in general, you want to minimize the amount of rules that end up in this rest bucket. Um, so, well, the, I guess only pathological style sheets have a lot of these because you don't typically define something for all hover elements or only by attribute selector. Uh, but I guess you could do that and uh, yeah, that's something to, to be wary of. Also helps a lot to use, for example, the parent selector, the greater than sign instead of uh, simply the ancestor selector. Ancestor selector requires a walk all the way to the top of the DOM tree to determine whether something matches the ancestor select. The, the parent selector only requires a single step. Um, but yeah, on the whole, uh, my experience is that it's actually pretty rare to write something that has a serious problem with style matching on a modern browser. That was all. Um, I'd like to answer questions or receive corrections or feedback uh, if anyone has something. Yeah. Does it work? Test? No. Um, you said that um, you were um, saying that 2D transforms are slower than 3D transforms. Um, uh -huh. I'm wondering why, because um, 2D transforms are layers, the, the same as 3D transforms, but um, those layers depend on the render Im implementation, right? Sorry, yes? These transforms, um, how does that apply? For example, um, on Android, on the old Androids, you have an implementation that left on top is the same as using transforms, because 
um, translate and translate 3D are only mapped to those functions on the render implementation. Uh -huh. um, and I was wondering why you said that 3D transforms right. overall are faster than everything else. Right. I, in fact, I've been wondering the same. I've been trying to get an answer to that last night because I figured this question would come up. Um, I didn't get a satisfactory answer. Um, if someone here knows, I'd love to hear it. My current interpretation is that um, a 2D transform requires the actual like polygons, the actual parts of the, the, the individual elements to be drawn in the transformed way, being more precise than drawing them uh, in the untransformed way and then letting the hardware treat that as a texture that it transforms. But I'm not sure whether this is correct. Well, um, okay. Sorry, does okay. Um, well, um, I got the answer, but I was only asking for um, well, only to clear it up. Um, three transforms are not faster on the uh, overall. Um, they are faster on different implementations on a GPU layer. Right. And it, and it depends on how the renderer itself the, that is running in the background process and the render tree is. Yeah, of course. If you don't so have 3D hardware, yeah, um, for example, you can use um, left top and Z index, which is a pre layout property, and it's overall faster than using 2D transforms or 3D transforms because uh -huh. they are only the same function but mapped. And yeah. Okay. Only wanted to clear, wanted to clear it up. Okay. <laughs> yep. Right. Thanks. Anyone else? Guess not. Okay. Thank you for listening.